Okay, change the subject. What about Ghaniapura? People always ask me that question. Um, you know, you have Alveapora and, and other low-light species. But take a look at this photograph here. You know, you, you see this healthy Alveapora, and right next to it, this one here that's all bleached out. Well, you can imagine what is over this aquarium. You know, this is not Alveapora. This is, and this one back here is um, Tubapora. That's organ pipe coral. And you see the healthy polyps here, and then the shrunk up, bleached out ones here. Same thing. Well, guess what's over here? Big light. Metal halide light. <laughs> and it's blasting them, and they're bleaching, and they're going to die. Okay? So that's part of the trick on these species. Um, the problem with Ghaniapora is a bleaching phenomenon. The question is, why does it happen? And the answer is not entirely known. And I've written a number of articles on the subject over the years. Um, what I can tell you, uh, and I have not completed the research that I started many years ago, but it was clear to me in, in when I initiated it that the addition of iron and manganese, uh, which are important um, metal ions used in enzymes that health corals deal um, with high light levels. Uh, when, when a coral is brightly illuminated, um, the zooxanthellae produce something called a superoxide radical. It's free oxygen um, atoms, and they, it's toxic to the tissue. So if you have too much illumination, the, the corals literally, literally burn themselves up. And to deal with that, they bleach. And when they bleach, then they, they suffer nutritionally. They're not getting all the nutrition that they need, and then they gradually starve to death. That's what happens with dying coral. Why is it that you put them in an aquarium and the amount of light that they get is maybe half of what they might get in the wild, and they still bleach in the aquarium? That's a great mystery. Uh, but that, the answer probably has something to do with the way that our illumination differs from light in the wild. You know, we tend to talk about intensity. Well, there's more than just intensity. Um, there's also uh, changes in intensity. In the wild, you have clouds passing, so it can be bright for a few seconds and then darker for a few seconds. And that, that sets up metabolic changes uh, in the zooxanthellae. They're pumping out oxygen for a while and then they slow down. Because the, the, um, the rate of photosynthesis is directly proportional to the light and it's instantaneous. Um, so that's one difference. Another is, uh, as I mentioned, iron and manganese, they're fairly rapidly precipitated. Uh, in a closed system aquarium. They're in very small quantity in, in nature, but they're constant. They're still, it's always available. Uh, addition of iron mang and manganese can be shown to improve um, coral coloration and, and recovery from bleaching. You know, and this is the end result. After the corals bleach, then they starve and there isn't much tissue left. Um, Bleaching occurs in all types of corals. Here you see a photograph in the wild of uh, Seriatopora, and the uppermost parts of the branches have lost tissue. It's so bleached that the tissue just was destroyed. And this happens every summer uh, to colonies that are up really, really in the bright, shallow water, uh, whereas the tissues on the side and underside, they survive. Deep water or low-light corals like trachophilia, the open brain coral, they commonly bleach, and um, if you don't catch it early enough, they will die. It's, this is the same thing that happens to Ghaniaporum. When Ghaniaporum bleaches, the polyps shrivel, they get tight right with the skeleton, and then they don't recover. I don't know why most aquarists haven't made the connection between what you see here in Trachophilia and Ghaniaporum. People tend to think, oh, well, what is it funny about Ghaniaporum? But look at that. That is exactly the same symptom except that this is one polyp, whereas Ghaniapora, we see it as many polyps. So this is a, a colony of a purple Ghaniapora, and it was the, the one species that clued me into the iron and manganese, because I noticed that whenever I would add iron and manganese to the tank, the polyps would come out. And if I stopped doing it, they would just fall in and get tight and start bleaching. So that, that started me to look into the literature on, on those metals, and sure enough, there, especially manganese, there is a discussion of, and don't confuse manganese with magnesium, they are different, um, uh, but they are critical in 
uh, enzymes that, that deal with um, superoxide. Uh, there's something called superoxide dismutase is an enzyme that involves some magnesium. Yeah, and this is what that uh, gadiopora looks like when, it, when it's receiving uh, enough uh, iron and manganese. So this is in my own aquarium, you know, and I experiment with different species of them. Diseases. Uh, 